Hey everyone, let's wrap up August and let's try to do this without much editing. So there will be a lot of in between probably that I usually cut out, but I'm running low on energy today and the day I'm filming this is Sunday and I don't know if I can edit it today. And when the week starts, I will never get it up. So let's try to get into this. I uploaded a few reviews and vlogs and a letter to August. Thank you all for your nice words about the letter to August and all the blog content. I really like doing them, even though I was a little bit, it's repetitive, but I love that the feedback from you that you always enjoy them. So that's motivating enough for me to keep them up. And I do enjoy the letters to the months. So let's get into the books. We'll start with the physical books that I mentioned all of those in videos before. So the first one we'll talk about got its own review, Shanghai Immortal. I really enjoyed this book. Shanghai Immortal follows the mix of a fox spirit and a vampire who is living in hell in the Shanghai for the immortals. And I love the world building. We see how she has a lot of anger management to deal with. And there's also a romance and a mix between the hellish world and the normal world. And those are things I really enjoy in fantasy where you have this mythical element. It's a lot in Chinese myth and how the spirit world is made up and is part of the whole world and how they can cross over into our world and interact. And the mix between the spirit characters and the human characters, all of that is something I really enjoy. And I really enjoyed the main character's voice because she was very angry and really easily frustrated. It is a little bit annoying at first that she feels so young, but it is addressed in the book and she really grows throughout the book. So I highly enjoyed that. I have better words and more explanations in my reading vlog about this. <clears throat> the next book I want to talk about is a reread. It was Chris Grimley's Frankenstein, which is a graphic novel using the original text and telling the story of Frankenstein. What I liked about this is not only the images, but I also like how it focuses on particular parts of the story where the text is used and in other parts where it's mostly pictures. So for me, the first time I read Frankenstein, I thought the book was very dragging and this really brought the story closer to me. I have a very, very old review up for this when I first read it. <clears throat> Next book is a German book, Glitter Schnitter, which is the fifth book in the Frank Lehmann series. I would not recommend this to anyone who hasn't read the other books. As a starter book, it's a bad book, even though it's very early in the events around Frank Lehmann. But it is continuing the story in the 1980s when he's just arrived in Berlin and started working at the cafe and a lot about the performance artists that they are involved with and the events going on. I mostly keep reading this because I like the writing style. I didn't find it as funny as I read other people perceived it. And I mostly felt nostalgic about remembering my own time at university when you had connections to artist people who always talked about their ideas and programs and things like that. And people who you didn't really were close with, but you know, those party talks you have. And that's what it felt like for me. So it might be a particularly German experience. I don't think it's translated yet. I know that the first book in the Frank Lehmann series that came out, Berlin Blues, is translated in English and that's 10 years after this one. So I would recommend it because that's the one I like best. Oh, I talked about um, Glitter Schnitter more in the vacation reading vlog, just like about La Vona, which I finally read and I really enjoyed it. I really like Otessa Moschek's writing. I really like the way she portrays and looks at people and the things she talks about. The story is sort of set in a medieval town or village that is ruled over by a lord that lives in a mansion. And we follow the events in this village and in the mansion for a bit over a year and following mostly the 
lamb herder's son who is disfigured and a little bit strange in the head as well. There's a lot of talk about religion and how religion governs their lives and their days and how different it is perceived in the village, in the mansion and also between the ruling part in the mansion and the servant parts in the mansion. I highly enjoyed it. I looked up that a lot of people found it disturbing, which I don't really understand because if you read Otessa Moschweg, you can expect that. And I didn't find it that disturbing. So don't trust me on trigger warnings on anything because apparently I don't notice when things are bad. The last two physical books I didn't particularly finish. She Who Became the Sun, I DNF'd with the decision. I read 260 pages of the 411 and I really enjoyed how it started off. The story starts off with the family in a famine and how the village has suffered and how the population has decreased. And in this family that we're following, we only have a father, a, a girl and a boy left of how many people there were before and then bandits roll into the city and they kill the boy so the father dies as well no other way around they kill the father and the boy dies slowly after so the daughter is left alone and the story follows the daughter and in the beginning it moves her to the monastery and shows her in the monastery that's the first part i really enjoyed that part of the writing and the story but then the second part includes more perspectives, other parts of the story. We are more involved in the war that is going on and actions and different parts of the events. Now, I probably went into this expecting more fantasy than historical fiction. I've seen a few reviews deciding if I want to finish or not. And I decided that I definitely don't want to finish because I am not particularly a fan of historical fiction. But that is not the problem with the book that I have. The main part of the girl's story is that she wants to have the fate of her brother. So her, father, her brother was fated to be or to achieve greatness and she was fated to be nothing and she doesn't want that. And while there's nothing wrong with that, the idea is just rep repeated all the time. So it's very repetitive on how she keeps trying to follow the fate of her brother and she keeps mentioning it or the book is mentioning it and it got on my nerves at some point and especially when we get to the second part and one of the perspectives we get is of a eunuch i hope that's how you pronounce that and the other characters also talking about his fate but his fate feels more like it's a past he's on and he can't get off and so we have these two different discussions of fate and while i personally think you can influence your fate and it's something that you have a choice over and you can make it yourself much like the girl but for the girl it's always like i want to have my brother's fate and pretending to be her brother oh i didn't mention that that's part of the whole story that she takes on the role of her brother and his name and pretends to be a boy throughout the book and so she tries by pretending to be him to also feel that she has the right to his fate. And that's something I don't understand because I think the fate is not connected to the name, but to the person. And the person of her brother is that somewhere in a ditch. And that really got more and more annoying the more it went on. I don't mind that she's trying to achieve the greatness and that she wants to change her fate from nothing to greatness, but always being like, oh, I need to be him to achieve that. As if by pretending to be someone else, you get that person's fate. That rubbed me the wrong way. Then also there is a lot of focus on the powerlessness of women in the society. This is set in 1300 China, so it's not surprising. It is also not bad to change that in a historical fiction to focus on the powerlessness of women and how their life's choices were limited and things like that. But that's also repeated so often that it got on my nerves. It was like someone is hitting me on the head with the things the book tries to do. And not in an enjoyable way of follow the story, see what is going on and things like that. So that really annoyed me. And 
most of the perspectives just bored me. I don't know. The beginning was so good. I really, really enjoyed the first part, but the second part is dragging on. Things are happening, but I'm just not interested anymore. So I decided to give it up at DNF. The other book that I am not, not finished is only Revolutions. It's a road novel, let's say it like that. But because it's a Mark Z. Danielewski, it's playing with the format. So from one side you follow Haley's story, from the other side you follow Sam's story, and then there's also a timeline in in this middle strip of the book that goes one page a year, summed up in words. And I talk more about this in the vacation vlog. I particularly enjoy Mark Z. Danielewski's writing, but this is a kind of road novel that I probably would have enjoyed years earlier a lot more. Nowadays I'm not that much interested in all that sex violence and the way it's written. It's, it's just not the text, the, the part of the stories from Sam and Haley is not particularly enjoyable to read. So I'm a little bit dipping in and out for the next few months until I've read all the text, but I'm not going to talk about it again. That's why I'm mentioning it here today. So that were all the physical books I read, but of course I also finished digital books. So let's just follow the list I wrote down. The first thing or one thing I finished in August is finally the Jules Verne collection, where um, multiple stories of his were collected together. In August I finished the Mysterious Island story. I talk also about that in the vacation vlog. Overall I enjoyed listening to the collection. I noticed that listening to collections of someone's work really makes you dive deeper in their writing and notice how they tell stories and you see developments or themes and motives over the course of their writing more. Overall, I think Jules Verne's writing was probably more suited for the time when it was published because back then they didn't have the technologies and knowledge that we have now. Nowadays it feels a little bit drawn out and wrong. It's just not there or it's a little bit, some of it is a part adventure, part travel writing and I think the appeal of it would have been more, just more, when you don't have the chance to travel and go anywhere and you don't know what's in the world. So a lot of mysteries that happen in his books are solved now. We know what's there and we have pictures and we can watch it in 3D at home. So that's what I felt while listening to it, but I still enjoyed it and I would highly recommend if you're interested in this kind of writing and want to see how it was done back in the day. Another book I finally finished was an ebook, Beauty and Cruelty, which unfortunately wasn't so successful. It took me forever to finish, mostly because I kept falling asleep on it and didn't enjoy it as much. I talked about that also in the vacation blog, but the story is following fairy tale characters and looking at the idea that fairy tale characters have their own world that is slowly dying because the people in our world don't believe in fairy tales anymore. It is addressing a few interesting concepts of how fairy tales don't speak to everyone so they cannot create the belief they wanted to have. Basically mentioning the fact that they are white cis heteronormative and that is interesting. And while that is an interesting discussion point, the book didn't work well. Mostly because I think for me the idea how they wanted to fix their problem with the lack of belief is to steal or kidnap humans to their world and then send them back to create belief. And nah, nah, that didn't really work well for me. Overall I cannot recommend this. Nope. But the ideas in it are nice, but I think there are other people who have done this better. Unfortunately, I can't think of anyone right now, so you can let me know in comments. Okay, another audiobook I finished was Cosmic Delivery Boy, which was a fun, pleasant adventure. We have a young delivery boy who's working mostly to support his family. His mother is sick, so 
energy bills, uh, not energy bills. So medical bills are high and the father is struggling. And so he's studying, but also doing delivery jobs for this. I think it's a pizzeria. And then one day, because he's such a trusted, good employee, his employer offers him another job. And all of a sudden he finds himself being the delivery boy, let's say for intergalactical multiverse Amazon. It's not called like that, but it's an idea you can have to imagine what's going on. And he goes and delivers packages to different worlds and finds himself in different adventures. I highly enjoyed this. It was very fun, fast paced without too much drama. I am not that much in the mood or in the mind frame for manipulative, intriguing, artificial drama that is created. So we have high stakes, but we're not really in a situation where we can't deal with it because too many emotions. So I really enjoyed that about the book. And I think there are more in the series, so I might check them out. What else did I listen to? Last Night at the Telegraph Club is a fiction about an Asian or Chinese American girl who's coming out or finding her identity as a lesbian in the 1950s. I enjoyed the book much less than I thought I would. The beginning was really interesting. I enjoyed the writing. We learn about her experiences and her timeline, but we also get the timeline of what is happening in America and in the world a little bit, and also flashbacks to her parents, how they got to America and how they met and things like that. So overall, it has a lot of interesting aspects. Towards the end, I would say it started to drag a little bit, but that was just me. Overall, I think it was an interesting story. It was probably a story that is important to other people more than to me. And I can highly recommend it if you're interested in this point of view. It is well done and I really enjoyed the audiobook. I also listened to Monkey King. That would be the last thing I listened to, I think. And that was a blast. I have come across the character of Monkey King in a lot of films, series, books, topics, anything. And I've always enjoyed the character of Monkey King, but I've never read the original source of his adventures because it's a hundred chapters and about a thousand pages long book. Who does that? I don't, sadly. But there's a new translation that abridged the original 100 chapters a little bit down. I think it's a little under 40 chapters now. And the beginning of the audiobook addresses the choices the translator made in abridging and um, adapting this translation. And I really thought that was very interesting. I also enjoyed the stories. So Monkey King is part of Chinese myth and the book that she translated is from the 1500s, but the stories appeared first around 600 or so. So it's a character that has gone through the ages with interesting adventures. And I really enjoyed listening to the original text. The audiobook was really, really well done. I highly enjoyed that. So I can recommend that if you've ever been interested in the Monkey King and his original stories, not just his character and his adaptations. And I really enjoyed how I could see things and relate things that I've seen in other, day, other adaptations and could put it back now to the original text. I enjoy things like that. So for that, that was already great. So let me just check if I missed anything. Nope. I mentioned everything I read. So August overall was a good reading month for me. I read a lot of physical books. That is strange because I've been reading a lot of digital books the other months. So I really enjoyed having books in my hands again. So I might have to buy more books now. Oh, the, not the worst thing to happen. Let me know in comments how your August went. I think I need to do a little bit of editing, but I could probably get that done today. Thank you all for watching. Let's talk about books and comments and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.